Good evening, everyone. Oh my goodness. The first ever Cultural Alliance of Western Connecticut online exhibition opening. So if you're curious about what's going to happen tonight, so am I. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is a total experiment, uh, but we trust and hope that you're going to enjoy the experience nonetheless. So I hope everyone here is sitting comfortably where you are with your favorite cup of tea or glass of wine, ready to enjoy an evening of art, but not just art for the sake of art. Tonight, we hope to stir, stir your thinking and uh, relate, help, help you to relate some, to some of the feelings that you have or have had during uh, one of the most challenging times of our lifetime. My name is Lisa Scales and I'm the Executive Director for the Cultural Alliance of Western Connecticut. And so we be begin our program tonight with a New York Times video um, that'll give us a glimpse of what we've endured for the last 11 months um, and what we are in all honesty uh, are still going through today. So sit tight while I queue up the video. So how's that for setting the tone? <laughs> you know, I just think the New York Times does it really well. Um, and I ran across this video and it um, really, you know, conveyed so much of the motivation behind our efforts tonight. The Arts Are Greater Than Art Exhibit is part of a larger campaign that uh, we've been doing for several weeks. And yes, it's a campaign to appeal to your generosity and your support not only of your time and talent, but of your treasure, if you, if you, um, if you can. Uh, but it's just as important to remind all of us of what, art, what the arts can do. As individuals on a very personal level, but also as a community, the arts 
really does have a power to bring insight and to inspire conversation, to innovate, and to help us move forward. Over the last several weeks, and for a few more weeks to come, we are unfolding the many ways we as a community can make the arts greater than. We are telling stories. Uh, we're telling that story. And one of the stories, for example, features the curator of tonight's opening. And I think it's fitting. Uh, and I could not be more proud to present to you Eyes of the World. of the World was born in Colombia, South America. I was on vacation and I read about the Women's March on New York City. We've been doing collaborative murals for many, many years in many different kinds of venues, but it clicked all of a sudden that I needed to do something political. And it was a wonderful opportunity for us to be able to express political views without being in your face and shouting about something, but doing something constructive and productive that gives everyone a chance to play a role in it. <laughs> With many, many months of design work behind us, we arrived at the March on New York City and it was overwhelming. We and our team of 20 artists worked with over 4,000 people that day. You're working with people you don't know who probably have a commonality with whatever the passion is for that project, but they're also allowing them to work together crossing age, gender, race, sexual orientation, political affiliation, cultural background, skin color, education. So it creates a camaraderie that speaks to the importance of art being greater than the actual topic at hand. The Cultural Alliance is very near and dear to me. I was on the committee that actually helped found it. We had a couple of different executive directors and then suddenly Lisa Scales arrived. She has created tremendous opportunity for artists to be able to sell and show their work. So I think all in all, Lisa's ability to gather all these different entities together and make them work in a productive way that results in artists feeling we have a home. There's always someone to call for information, for resources, and she always has the answers. They understand the importance of art within the community, what it can do for a community, how it can help a community, how it can help a region. Anytime you can accomplish something where more than one person feels they've done something greater than, you've done a wonderful thing for the community. I didn't mean to stop sharing that. Um, I, there was more on that page that I wanted to share you, but give it up for Joanne and Eyes of the World. Thank you. It's my baby. <laughs> um, on our website, um, if you if you haven't visited, I encourage you to go because there are several other stories that we're that we've already unfolded. Um, and it's that there's the place that you'll find um, ad additional stories that we're gonna be telling. Um, from art leaders throughout the region. So we hope that you'll come along with us um, on that journey. The Arts Are Greater Than Art Exhibit is a simple, but yet another powerful example of how the arts can help us to grapple with and make sense of this changing environment that we're in. Um, if this is your first introduction to the Cultural Alliance, first of all, cheers. Um, it's important for me to take just a few moments to share with you what it is that we do. Um, we've always made sure that the arts are a priority for planning and funding, now more than ever. Empowerment and education for the artistic and creative community is our aim. Rolling with the tides of the time in the last few months, we have been a beacon for COVID-19 resources. Um, for tools and opportunity, outreach, coordination for the arts. 
We work very hard to empower leaders to navigate issues on racial equality and social justice and advocating to ensure arts and culture remain important. And in order for us to remain important, we need to stay persistent in asking for your help. So tonight, there is no exception. Um, we are asking for your help. All of the original work tonight is available for purchase. It is an easy way to invest in the arts and a, a wonderful opportunity to support local artists and as well back the Cultural Alliance. Donations, of course, are also welcome. Later on, we will show you very explicitly how you can make your pledge tonight for either a piece of, the, of, uh, of art that you'll see or to make a donation to the Cultural Alliance in order to help keep the arts alive. There are um, so many already that we really uh, need to thank for their support, but especially we're taking the moment to thank People's United Bank, who is our major sponsor for this um, important effort that we're doing tonight, but also um, they have been a consistent partner with the Cultural Alliance. So I wanna take a moment to thank them as well. Um, and here, uh, I know that uh, rep the representative and board member of the Cultural Alliance is with us tonight, but um, before I uh, do anything further, I just wanna share a few words that she, has that she wants to share with you. My name is Jennifer Dwyer. I'm a branch manager for People's United States. Oh, can you hear that? Here in the greater Danbury area. People's United Bank is proud to support the Cultural Alliance in Western Connecticut in their mission to improve access to the arts. Engaging our companies through the arts is critical. On a personal level, they can deliver entertainment, inspire, educate, and bring people together. And for businesses, the arts can be an integral part of economic growth, jobs, and help to give a platform for entrepreneurs to share their talents in the form of small business, which are the lifeblood of our communities. People's United Bank's mission is to invest in programs and services that enhance the quality of life for residents, promote the economic development and well-being of neighborhoods, and supports the educational development needs of children and youth with special emphasis on low-income areas. The Cultural Alliance of Western Connect is working to make art more accessible through their programming, marketing strategies and advocacy. And we are proud to share in their goal of making our communities a more culturally diverse place to live and work. Thank you, Jennifer. I know that you're on the call tonight. I just wanna extend our thanks to you and to People's Bank. Um, now, turning the page and the focus on the exhibit uh, and the moment that everyone is gathered here for tonight. I am so pleased that many of our honorees are, have joined us this evening. And so as we get started, the curator in just a few moments will bring a few remarks on the show overall and highlight the top of show works that have been selected for this exhibit. After the slideshow presentation, which will take about 10 minutes, uh, there will be a few moments um, that we'll take to digest the powerful images that you'll see. And during that time, we encourage your questions. Um, we, in we encourage your comments and inquiries on the artwork. Feel free to use the chat box during the presentation um, so you don't have to wait until the very end. Tell us your thoughts about a piece of work. Ask a question for one of the artists. And for you artists, use this space to make further connections however way you are moved to. Um, so at this time, allow me to introduce to you an amazing individual and curator for the Arts Are Greater Than Art Exhibit. Joanne Hunter is no stranger to the Cultural Alliance as you saw in that video. Uh, she was on the steering committee to help the Cultural Alliance get organized way back when a former member of our board of directors who left her mark that is still very much present today. And as you can see, her support has remained consistent and the engagement is still there. And we're very lucky for it. Joanne is a Pratt Institute graduate, director and co-owner of the Art Spot, a school of fine arts in Danbury. 
an exhibiting and an award-winning member of the regional of a regional arts associations, many of them, serving on several art committees and art boards. Joanne is a visible arts activist in her community as well as the surrounding area. Won't you please help me to welcome Joanne? Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. You have very generous sentiments. I appreciate them. And thank you, everybody, for watching Eyes of the World. It is truly the most meaningful piece of art I have ever created. And I want to see it go on for many decades to come. So welcome to the show. Hello to the artists that are here that are exhibiting. I'm thrilled you're here. And I want to talk a little bit about the arts. The arts are greater than. Truer words were never spoken. Uh, let me ask you to ponder who can charge up a community? Who can bring awareness to social injustice, to societal dismay, to political disparity, and even to global pandemics? That would be artists. We're powerful beings. We're forcing those that gaze upon our art no option to, but to see what we present to you. We and our art can make you laugh or cry, celebrate, transport you to a different place, get lost in the expression of a portrait. We can make you feel our passion, our anger, and our souls. We are present, we are engaged, we are lifelong learners. And through our learning, we influence the shape and path of events, both by choice and by necessity. Many of us can't keep quiet. We cause events, we react to events. We call attention to unfairness, to the impoverished, or to the luxury of some parts of life. We are catalysts, vessels, and reflections of the times around us. We are the conversations and the conversants. We're the activists and the soothers, the despair and the lows, as well as the heart and soul of life. So we sound very cool, right? <laughs> but there are times in our lives we flounder. We root around to make sense of our art, to make sense of the world around us. We can get lost. We go through many iterations, but there was that one magical moment that every artist knows when you find your art voice. No matter how timidly or loudly it fluctuates throughout your life, you're an artist and that never changes. This has been a tough year. We have witnessed racial tension, civil unrest, economic struggle, downturn, a charged and a dangerous political climate. And to top it off, along came the global pandemic and unprecedented health crisis around the world. Literally, the world stopped. Unrelentingly, we record it. But in the process, many of us lose our livelihoods. We're still making art, you can't stop that. You can't stop an artist, but the galleries, the museums, the theaters, the venues, the projects, they've closed up or disappeared for us. So we do need your integral support. Arts organizations need support, museums need support, community art groups need support, individual artists need support. And tonight you may, if you choose, support both artists and a vital local arts organization. The passions of the artists presented tonight could bring you joy, sadness, exuberance, melancholy, deep belief, introspection, a celebration of an experimental art concept, or you could be witness to artists bearing their very souls. Consider buying a piece of art tonight and while supporting the arts, you are supporting the very thread of creativity that joins all of us, all of humanity as one. So here's the way to do it. Lisa's going to post the tile to show everyone how to make pledges or purchase art. You can use the personal chat message to Lisa to pledge your donations tonight, right now. And the Cultural Alliance will be back in touch with you by tomorrow. And we all thank you in advance for being part of this, if you can, tonight. And we'll show that again later if anybody else needs to, um, needs to see that, but know that you can just go right in through the chat and, and privately message Lisa. That information goes nowhere else. Um, I have come to learn that many wonder how a curator makes the decision of choosing art and setting up an exhibit. It's quite an honor whenever it happens. I think all curators have a different formulaic habit. Uh, I'm gonna share with you a bit of my process. 
And let me say first, I am always honored to be asked to curate. It is truly a singular pleasure to do this kind of work. Uh, with this show, with so charged a variety of eclectic mediums and styles created by over 26 artists, this show was joyful to curate. I especially appreciated the interpretation of the theme as it related to the works of the individual artists' uh, pieces. With um, no information about the artist or the titles or the background, I first look at the art to speak to me. I think that is the commonality of all curators. We begin the journey here. Then I'm searching for conceptual originality, uh, technical proficiency, any purposeful manipulation of the presented medium. After my sort of blind initial perusal of the works, I then begin to visit each piece on a much more intimate basis. Now I wanna see if I can feel the artist in their pieces, their background, their connection to their piece. Um, importantly, they and their works connection to the spe specific call of the show. It takes great thoughtfulness on the part of the organization issuing the call to artists to establish a theme for an art collective. So I want to see if the artist responds with an artist depiction to the narrative for this exhibit, especially of inspiration, change, and the highly charged power of art. By this time in my process, I've identified the works which have most moved me, the ones I found to be unexpected, um, powerful in context, those that inspired me or made me feel an aesthetic connection to them. I know which ones by now compel me to go back to them over and over and over again. And from this group, I determine the highlights of the collection. So uh, without further ado, I am happy to tell you about our first top of the show artist, Barbara Bernstein. Bobby, as she is called and known by most, is a peer of mine and is a joy to study as she works. She's very introspective. She's thoughtful and deliberate in her approach. There is an uncontained joy in every movement. She loves to create. She lives for it. She must do this. In this specific piece, Undefined, Bobby uses Tessera to lead you through part of her journey. She creates mosaics to reassure herself that just as she can make an image out of glass fragments, so can we create a unity and a wholeness from our fractured lives. She is herself most definitely undefined. Uh, she is a accomplished photographer. She creates moving collages. She's a captivating storyteller and makes astounding abstracted mosaics. Uh, she spends the bulk of her time with her beloved husband, Bob, but is constantly cataloging images, many from nature, uh, in her mental or physical library of references. Late at night, she goes up to her studio and simply lives. She creates. She believes color is imperative in her consideration for her art. It counts as the core of it. Bobby enjoys taking inspiration from an organic scene, going on to create abstracted and stylized forms from that. This particular year has been hard to endure. Uh, the isolation for her and her husband difficult to fathom. She feels this piece epitomizes how so many disillusioned, lost and angry emotions have been torn out of all of us making us all feel somewhat undefined. And this is her piece being shown right now. Next, I have the pleasure of being able to speak with and recording um, the next top of the show artist, Alma Al-Faham. Um, Lisa's gonna put up a recording of that interview that we did. Literally living from all over the world, Alma has spent time in places that are very different yeah. from one another. Her work revolves around presenting the importance of listening, accepting, empowerment, and being wise. Her figures command respect, while the abstraction allows introspection, introspection and in, uh, interpretation from each viewer. Uh, politics, societal constructs, constructs, relationships, women's issues, peace, peaceful coexistence all play a role in her art. I found this piece that she did called Women's Silence to be very arresting. The chaos of the broken color uh, surrounding the imagery, but the remaining core of determination and power and strength make me feel like I need to know this, this woman in this portrait. We're gonna hear what Alma has to say. Tell us a little bit about why and how you make art. Um, well, uh, art has always been in my 
blood uh, since I was a kid. Um, I've always uh, been known for using my hands and, and uh, um, uh, doing things with my hand and moving on. Um, I got introduced to many types of art, especially that uh, I'm an architectural engineer uh, um, major. So I was introduced to different types of art uh, and different kinds of art, but oil painting was always uh, something that I've wanted to do. Um, uh, when the kids grew up and uh, I had the opportunity to meet with, uh, with an artist who uses oil and uh, basically all he did was uh, uh, give me a canvas and some paint and then he said, go ahead, do it, it's inside of you. Of course, because I told him that I've taken a lot of courses in art uh, with the pastel colors and watercolors and uh, but there was always something about oil painting that I was so intimidated of and I thought that it's very hard. And then um, uh, he said, how about you just do anything on canvas? And he introduced me to the knife as well. I never knew that it existed. I've always loved the techniques, but I never knew that you can use knives in painting. And, um, and then this is how it all started. I came home with my first painting. And since then, uh, it became um, a passion of mine and I discovered my new passion and uh, um, I, I started painting since then. Have you tell us a little? Um, I think it's wonderful that you discovered oil paint. You certainly have no inhibitions about it now. That's fantastic. Your work is very powerful. Um, Alma said something that I will forever remember. It really touched me to the core. We were talking about the motivations for her art and how she would like to see her art interpreted by people. She said, we all have the same shadow. How very fitting for this show's theme. We all have the same shadow. Um, as I was saying before, the abstraction around the figure really tends to lead you to a more chaotic feeling, or at least it did for me. And yet the, the strength of that character being painted is very, very strong. Beautiful work. Um, next up, we're going to uh, speak with Suzanne Marson, who had did, uh, did a graphite drawing of Brother of the Leaf number two. series that I'm working on has to do with joy and just kind of embracing the everyday things that make us happy. And so I started this series with my family primarily because we kind of know what their, their likes and dislikes are and what makes them happy. So when I, I started this, I wanted their hands to be on what makes them happy or in the process of what makes them happy. And I started to photograph them with the things that I thought made them happy. And I, since the focus was on the hands, I really tried to create an angle that the hand was highlighted. And from there, I, I would go to, to Photoshop to crop to a size that I want or, or like just tweak the angle a little bit, not necessarily the angle, but the size of the picture um, to focus on the hand primarily. And then from there, it just a very slow very <laughs> process of doing it every little nook and cranny to make it look how, how slow? Because I know your your drawings are so deeply, deeply realistic. Um, how long does an average piece take? Usually about a hundred hours, depending on the amount of negative space that's in the in the drawing itself. Um, I have a couple where it's it, like my niece holding a frog, and it's just her arm and the frog, and there's a lot of negative space. So clearly, uh, that one took less time. Uh, the one I'm working on now is there's very little negative space <laughs> just in the, in the corners. So that one's, that one's going to take well over 100 hours. Wow. Uh, 
I was familiar with Suzanne's work before viewing this show's entries. And this one, yep. though, I could not take my eyes off of. Uh, Suzanne is a gentle, keenly thoughtful being setting out with her art to find joy in the simple moments of being human, even in the middle of the chaos around us. The minute details in her work, like the small curl of hair at the back of his neck, the impeccable nails, the weave of the hat, the drape of the shirt fabric, depicting just a split second of someone's spirit and the strength of personal peace. I feel like a voyeur when coming on upon these portraits, like I'm suddenly inside a bit of minutia where I'm a welcome guest in the inner circle. Her exacting process and the very unique perspective of her portraits makes them further um, captivating. Brilliant work, really incredible. I'm happy to be able to relay some of the conversation I had with Annette Womack about her art, her life and her world. Um, her piece is called Vernal Goddess. And we're gonna put that um, up for everyone to see. This fourth top of the show creator is an artist, a mother and an art educator who believes small actions become larger courses of action. I had a wonderful conversation with her. Um, she feels so many are not taking change seriously, winding up on the very, very wrong side of history. The portrait is not a real person, but Annette's embodiment of a moment, a moment in time. After this decidedly rough period of history making news that we've all lived through, um, politics and society, as well as the pandemic, she feels a strength must and will emerge to balance inequities. She wrote, every moment is precious. How do we respect this? How do we thrive? The earth and its energies play, Life force, life force manifests in transient ways throughout the wind and the waves, the storms and the sunshine, flowers that are here one day and gone the next. There's always a balance and ebb and a flow. How do you honor a moment? How do you encapsulate it and store it in your memories? Be present, be mindful, respect life. I was drawn to the calm and yet determined energy in this painting, the mixed media approach of oils, acrylics, and pressed flowers also, um, depicted as a young woman here with a purpose, and as I believe with the same concept of Annette, smash the system and change it through art. Next top of the show, I'm excited to present to you Paulina Gurner a young artist that has a unique and timely approach to her art. Uh, the movement, the very vibrant color palette, the composition, the mixed media, the liveliness of her piece, emotive and emotion, made me stop in my tracks. Uh, I infer so many things from this painting. I hope you will as well. We're gonna hear what Paulina had to say. Oh, sorry about that. Wrong order. Hi, thank you. We um, wanted to talk to the top of the show artists and congratulations for that, by the way. That's a, you're in a very prestigious group of artists. I was fascinated by your piece. I love the mixed media approach. I love the composition and the balance and the rhythm in it. I'd like you to talk about what motivated you to do this piece and how you see it fitting into the arts are greater than. Well, I was in New York City when I had this idea. I was at a center of some sort and I was going up the escalator and saw a colorful glass railing and then shop windows behind that. And as I was going up, I was thinking this would make an awesome picture. So I took a photograph of that. And then when I got home, I started looking at it and I was like, I really wanna find a way to transfer this onto a canvas. So I went around asking my friends and my family, I was like, should I do this in color pencil? Should I do this in pastel? Should I do this in oil? And everybody gave me different suggestions. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do all of that. So I put it all down and you know, the bottom half is done with acrylic and watercolor and oil and fabric paint. And the top is done in oil pastel. 
And as I was doing it, I started thinking about how this could apply to more than just myself, more than just a photograph. And I was thinking, you know, the top is definitely, you know, like monotone, very structured, very singular. And I was looking around and I was like, a lot of people are leading, you know, the same life. They go to school, they go to college, they get a job, they have kids. And I was like, but I want to bring some kind of vibrancy, some kind of color to this. And I started going with, started doing like the different colors on top of each other because I wanted to see how far I could push it. And I was thinking, I was like, a lot of kids my age, because I would talk a lot with my friends about it. And we all had similar views. And we we're like, you know, we need to make a change. Like we need to do something to add to what is going on around us. So I was adding those colors. And that's basically what I was thinking, how art can be greater than the life we lead around us. Hi. So Pauline is a college freshman. She is pursuing a cognitive science major with a possible pre-med path. And even that, with all that, minoring in art history. She is so open and fresh and direct in her art, art. Uh, and thoughtful beyond her years. Uh, this piece, I see so many different things in this. I feel there are so many different messages that other people could see. The vibrancy of it and yet the very subtle monotone in the middle really she is the daughter of proud Russian immigrants. She learned English as a second language at school. She started off drawing cartoon characters and moved to people and still life and animals. Uh, she said that time flies for her as she makes art every single day in one form or another and using it to quell tensions and find relaxation. Uh, she knows in her heart she'll never be able to give it up in her life and has no doubt she will continue to carve time out every day to give her creative outlet an opportunity to excel as it has so far really beautiful work. Um, I encourage her to put a website up and I don't know if we have that listed, but um, Lisa can certainly get that up onto the website afterward. She has some very incredible pieces. Our next artist, top of the show, though in absolutely no order this, this evening, it's our last artist, is Louise Boudreau. Uh, she shared with me that she's been very active as an artist during this slowdown in life as we wait out this virus and its implications and watching all the swirling history being made around us. This is what she had to say about her art. Oh, sorry about that, Joanne. That's okay. Louisa, how do you think the societal issues of today have impacted your artwork and how has your art impacted societal issues? Um, I'm going to start with the second part of the question because uh, about a year ago I started doing out, out, art outdoors uh, in public. I'm, I was a little frustrated with the way that art is kind of secluded to galleries and museums. And I felt like it should be a part of our everyday experience. So I started going out on the weekends and doing my artwork outside on the sidewalk using chalk. And it created a really good experience for people passing by. And especially in these difficult times, I feel like people needed that. Uh, people would stop by. I got a lot of positive feedback. Um, you know, people admired it. And um, these are people who wouldn't otherwise go to see an art exhibit, you know, wouldn't otherwise experience a museum. Um, you know, kids really loved it. They would stop by, they would want to join in. I've had a couple of kids, you know, just start drawing with me on the sidewalk. <laughs> That's and, wonderful. And, um, you know, it was a positive experience that I think really um, benefits people. Um, we're kind of unaware of how you know commercial things get pushed into our everyday experience you know if there's something to buy it's kind of been being shoved in our face uh, but if we want to have you know something relaxing or something positive something beautiful we kind of have to go look for it you know um i agree bringing the art to the public is a so phenomenal opportunity art. Yes, we, we kind of need more of that. We need more of a place, you know, for art in our everyday experience. Louisa, how do you... 
I'm going to answer Louisa's next part of her question. <laughs> she told me that she often finds that her art is rooted in old tradition, yet with her own sure. modern twists. Um, her series of public chalk art that she spoke about is based on a woman's art in India called Column Art. Um, her recognized piece tonight, Velvet, uh, piqued my curiosity for its detail and its very specific colorations and the palette of it. The pink is considered by Louisa to not be the oft perceived feminine color of the past, not a frivolity, but a rebellious call of social change. I loved that. Um, this traditional pen and ink method incorporates her modern twist of the use of gel pens in it. But it also nods to the resurgence of textiles, which many enslaved women of color were forced to use to make quilts, uh, now chosen by them to be used in quilts to preserve and present their own rightful place in history. Um, it's been a wonderful experience as a curator to be able to speak to the artists in this show. I hope you've enjoyed that part of it as well. Um, there will be time for questions and answers um, to the artists directly, if you like also, just put it through the chat and we'll get to that at the end. Um, please remember that all of our showcased artists offer the opportunity for you to order custom work or prints or have other works for sale as well. You can reach out to any of these talented artists through the Cultural Alliance of Western Connecticut. And now we're going to bring you to our uh, main event, the entire showcase collection of art is greater than. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, before I do um, turn on the presentation, I just want to um, a couple of things to remind you of. Um, I did um, send everyone in the chat. There is a price sheet with greater detail of each piece of work that will be presented in the slideshow. Uh, the name of the work, the, the number of the work, um, and you'll see in the slideshow that each piece is numbered. You do need to, um, if you have an interest in any one of the pieces, make note of that number fairly quickly because the number does fade away. Uh, but you could cross-reference that number in the uh, price sheet that I sent to you via the chat. Um, also via chat is the tile that um, explains if you are so moved to support us or to support one of the artists, which also supports us. Um, the tile that I submitted through the chat explains how to do that. The slideshow is about 10 minutes long. Um, and then when we're done, we'll reconvene um, for a brief moment to digest what we experience. So with that, um, I should probably, I'm gonna say at the onset and probably at the end, congratulations to all 26 artists that are participating in this exhibit. Congratulations.
Well, congratulations to all of the artists that are here with us tonight and to those that are not. You can all take yourselves off of mute. Um, that was quite, uh, you know, I don't know how many times I see that. Uh, thank you, Exa, for the hand clap. Yeah, thank you very much, all of you artists. Yeah, uh, bravo, everybody. Um, hmm. So, I don't even know where to go from there other than, um, you know, I guess this is the point in the, in the program as we're winding down um, or winding up, depending on your mood from that, um, you know, if you want to share any thoughts, or if you have any questions for artists that are with us, still with us, um, why don't we open it up for comments and questions. Oh, somebody's already asking, will this presentation be available at a later date? Um, yes, our, our hope is that we will um, do a Facebook Live with this um, at, at some time in the near future. Um, so it, it is being recorded and we will be uh, sharing this presentation for many, many weeks. Anybody else? Beautifully done, amazing curating. Yes, bravo, Joanne. Um, Thank you. Thank you so much for your for your time and your talent as well. Um, is there any other any artists on the on the on the call right now be, that would like to say a few words? Um, <clears throat> what the experience has been, um, what you hope to convey through your work? I'm going to put one of the artists on the spot for two seconds. <laughs> Susanna Smith, the youngest artist in the exhibit. Incredible idea. She actually was talking about using her clothes that she would not be wearing to school this year because of the virus, turned it into masks, made an art piece out of it, but left out the part that she made, I don't even know how many masks for her community and did not know how to sew before that. So nice job, Susanna. A really nice job. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, okay. Very nice. Well, I see that it is actually, um, we've run out of time. Before I let you go, though, I, I promised that I was going to send this to you before our opening tonight, just never really got around to it. So I'm going to share my screen one last time before we say goodnight um, and show you where you can find the exhibit if you want to bring people to it. It is on our site. Um, so here's the homepage here. Uh, which is our current, uh, the great, the arts are greater than campaign, but you can navigate to the show by going to what we do and see a gallery. Um, so it is live. The art exhibit is live. All of your work is listed here. It is uh, directed by the work. So um, they are not, uh, you know, visitors, are drawn to the work and they open up the work. And um, I'll just use Alma's here um, as an example. And it, and then uh, it, it opens up into a bigger view. If people click on it, the right orientation is then made available. Um, uh, but there people can see um, the medium, um, the price of course, a little bit about who you are and if you have more than one piece in this exhibit, it will show um, on the page. Mm, nice. okay. So I just wanted to share that with you. And for those that are not artists and, and um, are still <laughs> contemplating a piece of work, you can go to uh, you know www.cawct.org and uh, make your purchase there. Well, thank you so much, everybody. I enjoyed our time together. How was it? Thumbs up? Thumbs, Thumbs up, Lisa. Good job. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lisa and Joanne. Thank you so much. That was amazing. Yeah. Okay. Thank Terrific. You. All right. You guys have a good night. Okay. We'll have see a wonderful you. weekend. Bye have now. a nice weekend. You too. Bye-bye. Stay safe. Bye.